Welcome back to the Capitol Theatre. I'm Phil Kafkaloudis. This is the Gambling Harm Forum. We're certainly one of the more radical ideas that we heard, we heard from earlier in the, um, the program, was from the Darabin Council and Dr Susan Rennie, who is from the Victorian Local Governance Association, but is also the Mayor of Darabin. Susan Rennie, your council has taken pretty strong action with um, clubs, sporting clubs, not able to have gambling on their venue, on their sites, which is a very strong action to take. What, what else can councils do? I completely support what Dr Zernzak said about anything that actually reduces people's access to gambling because this is a very dangerous industry and they're dangerous products. So essentially, you know, I'd be saying to community groups, don't organise your outings in pokies venues, they're not safe. When you say they're not safe, that encourages people to get into the kind of thing, a spiral? We have completely heard that from these seniors groups. They say, oh, you know, we just go because um, the lunch is cheap. Believe me, someone's paying for that cheap lunch. And if it's not members of that group who are losing more than they can afford on the pokies, it's other people in the community. And so I think there's a question for us as a community, do you want your lunch subsidised by the misery of other people? And that's what happens in these venues. So anything that keeps people out of these venues, choosing other places to go, will actually make people safer. Our community has had enough of the harm that's being caused to everyday families. And it's not just the families, it's the small businesses in Darabin that suffer. We've got a community losing $225,000 every day. That is a hell of a lot of money that's not going into every small business along our shopping strips that could benefit from a bit of that. And those small businesses would employ a whole lot more people and do a lot more good in the community than these pokies venues are doing. Okay. Thank you very much for that and thank you for joining us. Now, Dr Sylvia Greta Bogutz is the president of the Polish Council of... Victoria, you've heard some of these suggestions and some very strong suggestions. Your reaction? What we're trying to do is uh, quite regularly we're organising leadership forums whereabouts we invite um, a members of uh, our Polish Community Council and uh, organise trainings and or uh, just workshops around how to deal with some of the issues. Um, how you mean how to deal with family members who family are gamblers? Members, exactly. Um, and themselves, if they're gamblers? Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Why, why is that? Because of the isolation that we heard about earlier on, that people are isolated and they need to connect with other members maybe of their own community? So a lot of them are um, totally isolated. They don't have families alive. A lot of them just um, want to go out somewhere. That's interesting, and that's one thing that we haven't touched on too much about the communities working together to, um, to try and get people out of these problems. Well, Dr. Keith Otuska is a senior lecturer in psychology at Victoria University in Biomedicine. Thank you for joining us. From what you've heard today and the suggestions we've got, banning um, about pokies being a problem, from what your knowledge of it is, do you agree that, that what people have said is uh, the best way to deal with this? Yes, I do. Uh, <clears throat> we should take a look at the uh, gambling. Uh, because I'm a psychologist, I tried to look at it from biopsychosocial sort of perspective. So the basic level is that our brain works. And some parts of the brain, the, the evidence shows that uh, it's overexcited when we are exposed <coughs> to chance events. The second one is psychology aspects. Uh, some of those um, are motivations that uh, players are going to over uh, gamble uh, is related to loneliness, uh, emotional disturbance. And we have to realize that the uh, acculturation process is stressful. And some people will take uh, maladaptive coping strategies to try to forget uh, the stress. So that, that is another issue. And um, another sort of theme that is again and again came up tonight is that uh, uh, help seeking within our ethnic communities uh, got to do um, is really really pitifully um, suppressed and we have to somehow to um, ensure that we have a professionals who can be trusted within our community uh, to whom we can consult another aspect which is I'm concerned about 
uh, is the early in the evening, uh, the um, the way that the gambling product is being delivered has been changed. And we are now seeing that the smart devices are used as a, as a gateway to deliver all those gambling type of uh, activities. And industry is trying to devise more exciting products which uh, has more of the skill components rather than just a chance components. So, but we did hear a little bit earlier from Tony Phillips, and Tony Phillips was saying that um, that really the, the amount of game, despite all this new sport betting and everything, that the new ways that people can gamble, that whether it is there is more mobile or not, that's not necessarily going to be the thing that gets people gambling more. Well, you were saying that it was really concentrated more in the people who are um, who are already gamblers. At a general population level, participation's falling. But then we have to look at the populations that actually are gambling and how intensively they're gambling and how much resilience they have to their gambling. These are all issues that we need to consider. So the social cost of gambling to Victoria in one year is $7 billion. That's counting the harm that's done. That's not just what's coming out of the budget. That's the actual harm that's being done. That's scattered across relatively small populations in terms of the entire population of Victoria, it's not 50 or 60 or 70%. So we need to look at the populations that are actually vulnerable and do something about it. The other thing is, if we were And you'd to agree the populations, older people, yes. younger people, disconnected people. People who go to EGM venues, people that go to <laughs> yeah. racetracks. You know, if you want to yeah, find right. problem gamblers, go to where the gambling is. Yeah. But we also have to be careful that we don't just talk about problem gamblers. If we were here talking about alcohol and we spent the entire evening talking about alcoholics, we look like we were back in 1955. 85% hmm. of the harm that's occurring is occurring often in small doses across a much larger group of people. There's about 36,000 problem gamblers in Victoria. There's about 550,000 people who are harmed in some way by their gambling. So it's a bigger issue than that. And all the different things we've talked about here are really important. How the products are delivered, how, the, um, how available it is for people to be able to get help, how much social inclusion there is, to, which is actually quite protective, which is some, some of the things that um, local governments are doing. And we also need to be thinking about um, stigma. One of the things that's a major barrier to people even admitting that they have a problem is that they have an idea, as people used to have about, I only have a problem with alcohol if I'm an alcoholic. If I'm lying around in an alleyway with a bottle of port in a paper bag, I have a problem with alcohol, otherwise I'm all right. Well, that's not the case, and we know it isn't with alcohol, and we need to get to that point with gambling. And we have heard tonight about how other people are affected by gambling, as you say there. So just as a final point then, what we were hearing before from Susan Rennie and Darabin and banning different things, shutting down the venues, do you think that's going to have an effect? Again, depends on the types of gamblers. Most people have a type of gambling that they do. Problem gamblers, about half of them will gamble on everything. The other half will be, I'm a pokies person, I'm a race person, I'm whatever. Um, the idea that people will go somewhere else to bet, I guess what I'd say is the research tells you that access and the culture are two really important things that govern how much people overindulge in any sort of product or any sort of activity. So issues around the access that we have and the types of products will always be very important, along with the cultural messages that are going on. And as I said, one of the things about all of the Australian culture in its multicultural diversity is it's not as big on gambling as people might think. It's actually, um, we spend a lot of money, but the people spending the money are not a very large percentage of the population, but we should be very concerned about them. Okay, thank you very much for that. We'll have to wind that up now. This has been the Gambling Harm Forum, which has been presented by the Ethnic Communities Council of Victoria in conjunction with RMIT that owns this beautiful building, the Capitol Theatre, and this is the first event here in this Capitol Theatre. I just want to say thank you to all of you for coming here and being part of this forum. I hope you got something from it. I hope at the very least it gets you thinking about those issues. Thank you very much for joining. It's been a great pleasure having you with us.